Henderson Opportunities Trust has performed well calendar year to date and financial year to date, its financial year end being the end of October. If I look at the, out, the drivers of that outperformance versus our FTSE All Share benchmark, it's a really broad spread of companies. For example, Next15 Communications, which is a marketing and PR agency focused on the technology sector, the likes of Surface Transforms, which does ceramic brakes, often for electric vehicles. It would be the likes of Sigma Rock, which is a building materials company. It would be the likes of Zoo Digital, which does dubbing and subtitling for content, um, often Disney content. And it would also include some of our larger company positions, the likes of Barclays, NetWest, and Johnson Matty. So it has been a very broad spread uh, of outperformers this calendar and financial year. And I, I think that's a really interesting point. And I, I'm actually really encouraged by that, the fact that performance is quite broad across the portfolio, because in the previous financial year, and you'll have seen this if, if you've read our annual report, the outperformance was very concentrated in a, in a narrow subset of the portfolio in the previous financial year. And it was very specifically those early stage companies, which are roughly 20% of the portfolio. It would be the likes of Ilico, which is solid state batteries, it be the likes of Ceres Power, which is a fuel cell company. So I find it really encouraging that actually we've moved on from the performance being driven by that very narrow subset. And it's now a much broader range of companies that are outperforming calendar and financial year to date. The key thing to always remember about POT is that it's incredibly flexible mandate. So we invest all the way down to AIM, and that's roughly 60% of the portfolio at the moment, and all the way up to the FTSE 100, which is roughly 20% of the portfolio at the time of filming. But it will be very flexible, and we can look across the whole of the UK market for where we're finding value. And how we assess value is very different depending on what we're looking at. For example, we have um, banks, we've been adding to banks within the portfolio, that's now just over 10% of the portfolio. We measure them relative to their historic valuations, res relative to peer valuations, and think they look attractive at the moment. But how we look at some of our earlier stage companies, which would be about 20% of the portfolio, is very different to how we value the banks. So this, I can't get across enough just how broad the portfolio is, how it's very deliberately diversified. So it makes it harder in a way for me to sit here and say, okay, the theme that will drive hot is alternative energy or the domestic economic recovery. Although there would certainly be elements of the portfolio that benefit from both of those things. It is a very broad, deliberately broad portfolio where we're trying to get different end market exposures, but really the next generation of leaders in each of these different end markets. Where we're finding the most opportunity at the moment is two buckets within the portfolio. And for anyone that's been following our investment process for a while, we, we manage hot according to these seven different buckets and where we're finding the most value at the moment. And this is only on average, we are also adding elsewhere, but it would be the recovery area of the portfolio and natural resources. And where we're funding that from is, is broadly the earlier stage company element. So the likes of Ceres Power, for example, we've reduced and also the growth element of the portfolio. So for example, Boku, we've, we've taken some profits there. We're adding to names like Marks and Spencer, like Keir Group, like Anglo-American, like Serica Energy, where we're finding good value versus history, versus peers. And these are companies, for example, in the recovery element of the portfolio that will really benefit or, or we think will benefit as the domestic economy reopens, as people go out and spend in the shops again. And we're hoping to see a strong earnings recovery in some of those names. The natural resources element we think will benefit as commodity prices continue to be strong and some of these companies continue to trade at low valuations relative to the cash flow that they're producing.